This question deals with a 34-year-old Caucasian male recently diagnosed with membranous glomerulopathy, experiences sudden onset flank pain and gross hematuria. So we have MGN here, hematuria and flank pain, which is sudden onset. Okay. On physical exam, there is left-sided varicocele. Physical exam shows left-sided varicocele. Urine analysis reveals increased proteinuria. Obviously, this is a nephrotic syndrome. There is going to be increased proteinuria. The patient's condition is most likely related to urinary loss off. So urine is going to lose what product? That, that's what we have to find out. So this is a little bit of a tricky question because we know that this patient has MGN, which is a nephrotic syndrome. So you might think, okay, we might lose protein. We might lose fat. Okay, but in these kind of questions, when they already tell you that this is a nephrotic syndrome, there is other things they are also telling you. They are th telling you there is a left-sided varicocele. And the question says, the patient's condition is most likely related to urinary loss of. So what does the patient have? The patient not only has MGN. If the patient only had MGN, we would have jumped to protein or fat. Okay? We're going to lose fat or protein. The patient has MGN plus the patient has um, MGN plus the patient has varicocele. Right? They might be related. The varicocele might be related to the MGN. And if there is a relationship, what would we lose in our, uh, in our urine? That's the question that they're posing. So, okay, so let's talk about a little bit about the anatomy of the, the left and the right testis. We know that the left testis um, drains through the left testicular vein. Now, left testicular vein, let me go to a fresh page here. So the left testis drains itself through the left testicular vein. In, and the left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein. The left renal vein then eventually drains into the inferior vena cava. That's the left side. Now what's happening to the right testes? The right testes is going to directly drain into the inferior vena cava through the right testicular vein. It's going to skip the right uh, right renal vein. Okay, there is no right renal vein. As a result, you see there is more stops on the way for left testicular vein, uh, for the left testes and the right testes. So the chances of obstruction is more on the left side than on the right side. Some of the common causes of obstruction or occlusion could be a tumor. There could be a tumor. There could be a thrombus. Okay, which can impede the left which can also impede the right, but the chances of having it on the left side is more because there is more roads to cross, okay? Now in MGN, MGN is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome and many important proteins are lost as a result of MGN. There is going to be loss of anticoagulants, okay? There are going to be loss of antithrombin 3, okay, which is also proteins made in the liver. Now, antithrombin 3 is responsible for preventing thrombotic and thromboembolic com complications of the nephrotic syndrome. Okay? Now, renal vein thrombosis can be a manifestation of the hypercoagulable state because once we lose antithrombin 3 there is nothing there to really stop the thrombin. The th thrombin is going to hypercoagulate and the chances of hypercoagulating the left side is more than the right side. Just like in the lungs, you know how the lung has a, the right bronchus is straight so whenever you aspirate something the chances of going into the right lung is more than the left lung. Just like that if there is an hypercoagulable state, the chances of it blocking the left testes than the right testes is much higher. So this is what's exactly going on in this question. Again, let's read the question with, the, with what we learned so far. 
we learned that if there is a hypercoagulable state, hypercoagulable state is going to cause thrombus to be formed, and the thrombus has more chances of being formed in the left testes than in the right testes. It's not that only the left side is, we're going to have thrombus on the left side. We can have thrombus anywhere. But this is just one of the common complications, and this is related to renal. That's why we're talking about it, right? So a 34-year-old Caucasian male recently diagnosed with MGN experiences sudden onset of flank pain and gross hematuria. On physical exam, there is left-sided varicocele. Urine analysis reveals increased proteinuria. The patient's condition is most likely related to the two urinary loss off. So we know that this is nephrotic syndrome, but we're not only talking about nephrotic syndrome, we're talking about nephrotic syndrome plus hypercoagulable state. And this, those two conditions together, what is responsible for the urinary, uh, through the urinary loss that will give us both nephrotic syndrome and hypercoagulable state? That's going to be our antithrombin 3. That's the obvious choice. So C is the correct answer. Now, this kind of condition often present with sudden onset of abdominal or flank pain and gross hematuria. The renal vein thrombosis occurs on the left side in male patients with obstruction, impeding the venous flow from the left tes testes, and left-sided varicocele occurs. Okay? So we kind of exhausted that option. Now let's talk about some of the other options. Let's talk about albumin. Albumin is also lost in massive quantities in urinary nephrotic syndrome, leading to hypoproteinemia, decreased intravascular oncotic pressure, fluid shifts to the interstitium, right, resulting in edema. Protein loss results in negative nitrogen balance, but it does not lead to, um, it does not lead to hypercoagulable state. So that is not the correct answer. Ceruloplasmin. Serum ceruloplasmin is decreased in Wilson's disease. There is no rule for ceruloplasmin in the, in the pathogenesis of nephrotic syndrome, so not related. Let's talk about choice D, uh, lipoproteins. Now, lipiduria is a common nephrotic syndrome. This is caused by increased synthesis of lipoproteins by the liver and increased glomerular capillary wall uh, permeability to larger molecules, which leads to lipid loss in the urine in the form of free fat. That is, again, not related to this hypercoagulable state and MGN. Now, let's talk about choice E, loss of immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulin loss will not cause hypercoagulable state. It's going to, you know, make the patient more prone to infection, especially pneumococcal infection, right? And last of all, choice F, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is an inherited condition that results in early signs of uh, liver cirrhosis. There is going to be panacinar emphysema with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So again, that is not going to cause MGN and hypercoagulable state.